Well, we are continuing our summer series called Summer Heat, where we are just bringing some fresh, hot messages every single Sunday. And thank you for all the communicators uh, that have brought incredible words. We have one more week of Summer Heat next week. You do not want to miss it. But today I want to talk to you about a subject that 100% of us deal with. 100% of the people listening to this message right now or in the future or right at one of our campuses, you deal with this message. You're not exempt from it. And I titled it this. It is, it is my big struggle. It is a thing that I've dealt with for years and years and years. So I'm gonna get real vulnerable. We'll laugh a lot. And then we're all gonna get really convicted and God's gonna change us. So let's talk about it today. Today's message is titled, Watch Your Mouth. Watch your mouth, watch your mouth. Come on, after you write it down, turn to your neighbor and just say, watch your mouth, watch your mouth. We, we, we all have a problem with our mouth. Let's, let me just at, poll the audience at all of our campuses today. And I'm not talking about in the past like 10 years. I'm talking about in the past like couple weeks or maybe even a month. How many would say something has come out of their mouth that they should not have said? Come on, say, raise that hand. All right, if your hand's not raised, you're a liar right now, okay? You're a liar. We've all said something. We've all had those moments where stuff has come out of our mouth that shouldn't be there. Uh, I, I, and, and we have to respond to it and we have to make up for it and we're trying to fix it. I'm gonna teach you today how to watch your mouth. It reminds me of a story of a man who was working in the produce department and he was asked by a lady if she, if he could buy a half, if she could buy a half a head of lettuce. He replied, half a head? Are you serious? God grows these in whole heads and that's how we sell them. You mean she persisted after all the years I've shopped here, you won't let me buy half a head of lettuce? Look, he says, I'll ask the manager. So she indicated that would be appreciated. So the young man marched to the front of the store, said, you won't believe this, but there is a lame braided idiot of a lady back there who wants to know if she can buy a half a head of lettuce. He noticed the manager was gesturing kind of weird to him, and he turned around to see the lady standing right behind him, obviously following him to the front of the store. And he says really quickly, and this nice lady was wondering if she could buy the other half of the head of lettuce. <laughs> Later in the day, the manager cornered the young man and said, that was the finest example of thinking on your feet I've ever seen. Where did you learn that? And he says, I grew up in Grand Rapids. And if you know anything about Grand Rapids, you know that it's known for great hockey teams and ugly women. <laughs> the manager's face was flushed and he interrupted. He said, my wife is from Grand Rapids. And the boy responded, and which hockey team did she play for? Yeah. That's funny right there. <laughs> we all have moments where words come out of our mouth that we wish didn't happen. I'm telling you, I'm so grateful for my wife. She normally sits in our first service every single week because afterwards she'll pull me aside and say, Aaron, you can't say that. Aaron, you don't know what you just said. Yeah, you gotta have some people in your life that once in a while will help you watch your mouth. Uh, I remember growing up and I talked a lot and my mom who was here this morning, she can testify that there was multiple times she'd go, Aaron, watch your mouth, watch your mouth. Eventually it was come to the sink. We're gonna clean out the thing. How many had a, a, a sink cleaning with us? The soap in the mouth experience, right? We all had those moments. Why? Because we all said some stuff that we shouldn't have said. The average male, by the way, speaks 7,000 words per day. 7,000 words per day. Which, by the way, women, you speak an average of 20,000 words per day. <laughs> That's science, ladies and gentlemen. So, let me tell you, it's not that you're weird. It's not your spouse has a problem. It's just they're a woman, okay? That's the problem. So the, we, we all speak a lot. The average human, by the way, speaks 860 million words in their lifetime. So a lot of those are gonna do a lot of things. They're gonna help a lot of people. They're gonna also hurt a lot of people. So I'm gonna teach you how to deal with your words. And the best passage in scripture for it was written by Jesus's brother. Jesus' brother wrote a book by the name of James. So I want you to open your Bibles because we're going to go verse by verse through it for a little bit today. James chapter 3. And he deals with this issue of our tongue and how to control our tongue. And he says it like this in verse 2. We all stumble in many ways. Chapter 3, verse 2. Anyone who is never at fault in which they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. Now let me just pause there for a second. He, he says this, if you can control what you say and you never slip up, you're perfect. Now, that doesn't actually mean perfect as in like perfect, perfect. Here's what it means. It's, it's in your notes. It actually means you're mature or you're healthy. And remember, this is our year of health. So we want to have a healthy life. 
but that's going to start with us having a, a healthy tongue and what we speak. And this is a process. I, I love getting around new believers, people that have just started following the Lord and they start saying phrases and then uh, it'll start slipping up where they start cussing and they'll look at me and go, oh, oh, sorry, I, I realize I, I, I'm around my pastor. I got I to gotta learn to control that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's a maturity thing. You got to learn how to grow. My son, Kai, he, he's my, my middle child. And, uh, and when he turned five, he got this new profound like desire to tell everybody the obvious things he sees in the world today. So you would think it wouldn't be a problem. It was a big problem. And so we would go into the grocery store and I remember seeing a man uh, and he, he was bagging the groceries and nice guy, but he had, he had a unique little uh, like growth on the side of his face and, and the real world, and nobody wouldn't say anything. Nobody that's a mature person would say anything. But my son looks at it and just right up the way, just, what's that thing? And as a parent, your heart sinks. Like I, I remember sitting there, I'm trying to like, you know, divert it. And so I had a whole conversation with him. I'm like, son, we do not say that. And so Katie and I are trying to, trying to work, work him through this whole process and trying to, trying to deal with it. And then, and then uh, it, was, it was a little bit later, you know, we were in an elevator and there was a man, he had kind of a rash on his arm, not a big deal, but my son looks at it and all of a sudden just, hey, what is that? What's wrong with your arm, man? And I'm like, son, and so again, another conversation, another parenting moment another time to like to to to, to help him i remember then we, we we saw a guy a family friend of ours and he had an accident so so he uh, didn't have legs so he has uh, prosthetics and they're metal and walked into the room this is about uh, a couple months ago big big win because my son looks and looks but his eyes go wide oh, no. just really big and i'm like oh no oh no lord <laughs> lord and he comes up to me he's like daddy and he asked me he's like what's wrong with his legs and I was like, son, thank you. Yeah. Proud parent moment. It was all Katie, but I took all the credit for it. <laughs> and and, and what, what is that? It's maturity. It's growing. Not everything that comes to your mind needs to come out of your mouth. Amen. There's a mature process in there. He says, listen, you're going to grow. You're going to be able to keep your whole body in check if you can control your tongue. Verse 3, we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us. You can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large, they're driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boast. It, your tongue is, the average tongue is two inches. All right, two inches. So everybody do this. All right, come on, let's see it, everybody. All right, let's see it long. All right, some of y'all can touch your, tongue, your, your nose with it. That's a skill. All right, I can't. Uh, but, but in reality, if we were to measure your tongue based on the impact, most of your tongues would look more like, uh, yeah. uh, 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 that's what it's look like, all right? It, it, it's, it's, it's disproportionate in size because it really destroy, does so much damage. You can remember, you can remember the time growing up when that one person said that one thing and it messed up, messed you up. You could be having a great day on cloud nine. One person says one careless thought and it wrecks your whole day. Why? Words have power. They have, the, they have this ability to change your life. And I promise you, it's not just the words that are spoken to you. It's the words you speak about yourself matter a lot. Amen. So we have to learn how to deal with it. Look what he says. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body makes a great boast. Consider what a great force is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and it itself is set on fire by hell. Some of you guys, you, realize, you wonder, why does your life look like hell? It's just problem after problem. It's because you've set it on fire by your careless words. And we have to learn how to control our tongue, control what we say, so that it'll eventually navigate our life. He says all kinds of animals and birds and reptiles and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It's a restless evil full of deadly poison. And if this was a self-help talk, I would end right there and say, sorry, you can't tame it. Move on. Let's go. But the fact is, is that what is humanly impossible is always divinely possible with our God. Can we hear an amen today, church? So we can tame it, and I'm gonna show you how. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come both praise and cursing, my brothers and sisters. This should not be. Let me give you three key principles about your tongue that are super important. Number one, you need to write it down in your notes this way, that words are powerful. Words are powerful. 
Our words have the ability to change environments, to transform relationships, to destroy relationships, to destroy your business. What you speak really does matter. Japanese scientist, Masaru Emoto, he did an experiment, and I thought this was fascinating. There's been books after books written on this experiment done in the late 90s. And he tested the crystallization of frozen water through the use of positive and negative verbiage. To one group of water, he spoke negative words and phrases, and to the other, he spoke positive words and phrases. So he did this for 24 hours. One group, he just spoke positive, uh, I love you. He spoke peace and joy and, and happy stuff over it. And this is the result after 24 hours, looking at the crystallization of the, of the water, that's what it looked like. And it, it looked like that. So what he did is he goes, I wonder if there's a difference when he spoke negative over, the, over the, another group. So he did another group and a controlled environment for 24 hours, spoke negative fearful, hurtful phrases. And after speaking over and over again for 24 hours, it, one, it did not turn out like this. It turned out like this. That's what the crystallization looked like. And there's been so many books written on this idea of how powerful our words are. He, hear me out. Your body is made up of 70% water. Your brain is 80% water. So if the effects of water look like that on a negative, on, on, and with negative words, what's happening to your life as you speak negative after negative after negative? You go, I just don't know how to have a positive life. You start with having a positive tongue and watch how a positive tongue creates a positive life. And, and, and by the way, what he discovered was discovered thousands of years ago in God's word in Proverbs 18, 21. And it says it like this, the tongue has the power of life and death. Amen. So if you wanna bring life to something, you need to start speaking life over it. And there's also death that can be brought to situations. And I've seen it time and time again, relationships ruined, churches broken up, people sitting there living in lives that are just so dark, why? Because they don't know how to speak God's word, how to speak life over people. Dr. Andrew Newberg, a neuroscientist at Thomas Jefferson University said it this way, a single word has the power to influence the expression of genes that regulate physical and emotional stress. Single word. And you know this, because we've all had those moments where those words were spoken over us and it changed our day, or you've spoken words over other people and it's changed their life. So we have to figure out what is our tongue speaking. Many of you have a deadly tongue. Here's a deadly tongue. A deadly tongue is gossiping. A gossiping. And we do this all the time in the church. It's, it's we, 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 we're sharing this thing and, and this person told us and here's how we disguise it. We disguise it as, hey, I just have something for you to pray about. <laughs> okay, put this on your prayer list. You need to know, did you hear about Sandra? It's crazy. I heard her and her husband are breaking up. Not just for you to pray about. It's not for you to know about. It's gossip. It's gossip. There was a missionary named Dr. Uh, Van Dyke who was a famous missionary. He came back from working with the tribes in these jungles. And he came back and started working at a local church here in America. And after seeing some of the drama within the local church, he wrote this, and I thought it was fascinating. He said, cannibalism is dying out amongst the barbaric tribes, but it is still survives amongst the most highly civilized people. You might find yourself in some difficulty if you invited a company of friends to a feast in which the principal dish was a well-roasted neighbor. That would be weird. Like that would, that would be weird. Everyone would refuse with horror. But if you wish to serve up somebody's character at a social entertainment or pick the bones of somebody's reputation in a quiet corner, you will find ready guests and almost incredible appetites. Wow. And that's the truth. Because we live in such a way that it's just fought. We're, we're drawn and we're fed by gossiping. Here's another the other toxic tongue is, is complaining, complaining. Yep. And we live in this world where it's just, we walk outside, it's hot outside, it's hot outside. You live in Florida. <laughs> you chose to live here. Everybody around the world wants to live here. It's gonna be hot. It's just what it, you're complaining. Here's what pl complaining does. Complaining is toxic verbal pollution to your environment. It's verbal pollution. So when you complain about it, it's not making it better, it's making it worse. So, so stop speaking what is negative over the situation and stop complaining about your spouse. Start complimenting your spouse and watch how it'll change. Watch how things turn around. Complaining, it's verbal pollution. Here's what Paul tells us. Do everything without complaining and arguing. 
Everything, everything you do in your life, do it without complaining. It's, it's a key thing that we have to learn to do in our life. Here's, here's the last one of this. It's carelessness. We've all had those moments where we say a phrase, and it's just careless, isn't it? You know, hey, you, could, you know, oh, man, it wouldn't, wouldn't hurt you to drop a few pounds. You're like, ugh, and it hurts. You know, it's like, hey, pastor, it's a good message. I've heard better. You're like, ugh. <laughs> like, we've all had those moments, and, and it hurts. And, and you know, it, it's one of those things that you've got to learn how to guard your mouth to go, what is coming out of my mouth? Is it thought through? Most of the time, you're just going, off the top of my mind, here's what I think. No, I don't want to know what's on the top of your mind. I want to know what's deep in the mind. Think through it. Like, what's, what's, what, is, what is actually thought through? Let me give you one verse that messed me up and honestly convicts me still to this day because it's, just, it's an issue I deal with all the time because I like to joke around. I like to have fun with people. But I realize our words have so much power. Proverbs chapter 26 says it this way. I want you to get the visual of this. All right? Like a maniac who's shooting flaming arrows. All right, pause right there. All right, imagine this. You've got a maniac with a bow and arrow that has fire on the end, and he's just shooting arrows. Woo! You'd think this guy's crazy, right? So like a maniac who's shooting flaming arrows of death is the one who deceives their neighbor and follows up the deception with, guess what? I was only joking. Yikes. That's convicting to me because how many times do I make a joke and like, hey, I'm just joking, just kidding around with you. And what is it? He says, it's like somebody who takes flaming arrows and fires it at. Why? It destroys people's life. And let me tell you, the world is too messed up right now for us to be careless with our words. We do not need to be negative in our tongue. We need to be life-giving and positive in what we speak. Can I hear an amen today, church? Here's what a life-giving tongue looks like. A life-giving tongue is one that compliments people. So you see something that's done well, you, you, you compliment. Hey, I like your outfit today. You look nice today. Hey, you did a good job on that presentation. My grandmother, who is 85, she's in the first service this morning, and she, she attends once every like three years. She, so she gets in town, it's a big deal. And she walked up to me afterwards, and that was an excellent message, Aaron. And I'm like, oh, it just means a lot. You never outgrow the need for a compliment. Never outgrow it. So if you need it, guess what? Everybody else in your life needs it. Right. So learn to let, be, be someone that just constantly gets compliments. Here's the other one. It's a, it's a tongue that encourages other people. Yes. It just builds other people up. It encourages them. We need that. You know what the, the word encourage means? It means to put in courage. So we are in a world where we're fighting and we're, we're in this culture war and there's struggles going on and we're trying to live for God and we come into church and here's what we don't need. We don't need to get beaten down. We need an insert of courage. So you get in your small groups and we encourage one another. We tell them, you can do this. You can overcome this. You can be victorious. We bring encouragement. First Thessalonians 5 says it this way. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. I don't know where we get this idea that the church is called to tear everybody down. We're called to build one another up. We need each other in this. I, I, my siblings are here this morning. And they know this story because it was a lady. She was like, she was a, a very close family friend who uh, we called her an aunt, but she wasn't an aunt. And I remember I had to have been nine years old or uh, young, young, young. And she was always around our family. And she came up to me one day. And I remember the spot in my house where I was standing. And she walked at me. And she said, Aaron, I got to tell you something. She said, I'm, I'm telling you, I love your family. But out of all your siblings, you're my favorite. You're my favorite. And I was like, oh, oh my gosh. And then she said that she's like, I'll never forget. She's like, you're my favorite. I think you're going to do more than anybody else. I was really pumped. I remember for years after that, but she, she ended it with this. I'll never forget. She ended it with this. She goes, but I just want you to know, because I don't want them to feel bad. Don't ever tell them. Don't ever tell them. I said, okay, okay, okay. For years, I walked around. Anytime I felt insecure, anytime I felt beaten down, I remembered that lady and I go, you know what? I'm someone pretty special. I'm actually, I'm better than all my siblings, that's for sure. That lady told me that. I mean, years. And my, my siblings have gone on, done incredible things, incredible stuff, very successful. And I would feel insecure at times. I'm like, no, but you know what? Someone thinks I'm better than them. That's a big deal. <laughs> it was a few years ago, true story. We, I was telling them this story and they were like, she pulled me aside too. 
I was so mad. She told it to all my siblings. I'm like, this lady was a liar. That's great. Encourage one another. Amen. Here's the last one. Is here's what a life-giving tongue does. It corrects in love. So it doesn't, it doesn't skirt around hard conversations, but it does them in an attitude of love. Like you're actually gonna think about what you're saying. Let me tell you, some of you, the best thing you could do when you're angry is pause and just go, I'm not gonna say anything right now. Yeah. I, I, I have a hard time with crucial conversations. I'm not really good at them. But when I do them, I have to actually write out exactly what I'm gonna say because I don't want my anger to guide me. I want actually truth and love and grace to guide the conversation. Yeah. A lot of you guys, you get yourself in the situation because you speak out of feeling instead of out of the facts and out of faith in your life. So you gotta, here's how James says it. My brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen and slow to speak. That would resolve most of your speech problems right there. Slow down. Think about what you're going to say. And then he says, and slow to become angry. I love how he puts angry after speak because most of the time we try to speak something and then we get angrier as we speak, don't we? <laughs> so slow down. Number one, your words have power. Number two, your words reveal who you really are. So we say this statement, where did that come from? I know exactly where that came from. You got cut off in 275 and that word came out of your mouth. You're like, oh, I just want you to, that's not who I am. That's exactly who you are. The fact is, it's okay. It's because we're trying to mature. We're trying to get better. And if we can get to a place of maturity where we can control our speech, guess what? Then, then it shows that we're doing pretty good in our life. You know, you go to the doctor and the doctor, what is he going to do when he examines you? He says, open that mouth up. What do you do? You go, ah, he's looking at your tongue. Let me tell you, this is a spiritual checkup for you today in the middle of the summer. You got you to get checked up and go, what are the words that you're speaking dictate real spiritual health in your life? And I, that's not my opinion. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said it this way, a good, healthy man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil out of the evil stored up in his heart. What the mouth speaks, what the heart is full of. So if your heart is full of stuff, then it's going to eventually come out of your mouth. I've said it this way for years, and I think it's brilliant. It's better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak and remove all doubt. Because some of you guys, when you speak, we figure out who you really are. And we have to realize who we really are. It comes out of our mouth. It will eventually come out of our mouth. I wrote it down this way just to kind of help you diagnose because really it's always a reflection of our heart. That's why that sarcastic comment you made to your spouse, it's not, it's, that's from nowhere. No, it's actually from somewhere. It's, all, it, it's always deep down in our heart. We just got to figure out where it's at in our heart. I put it this way. A person with a harsh speech, a harsh tongue, has an angry heart. And some of you, you're just so harsh. Where does that come from? It comes from anger. Probably some undealt uh, with issues. You need to go see a counselor. You need to get, get some healing, get some freedom. A person with a negative tongue, guess what? They normally have a sad heart. Why? Because out of that, they're always just seeing negative, 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 because it's negative in here. A person with a boasting heart, wow, wow, you ran a mile, I run two miles. You make, you make 40 grand a year, I make 45,000 a year. That's awesome. That's, I'm just, it's awesome. A, a, a boasting heart, guess what? Almost always they have an insecure heart. If you find yourself always trying to boast, always trying to brag, there's normally an insecurity inside of you. A person with a filthy tongue, <laughs> you just can't say, like, you just keep saying stuff that's just inappropriate, wrong. You go, I don't know how to fix it. It's probably because you have an impure heart. And we got to get that stuff out of our heart. And a person with a critical tongue has a bitter heart. There's bitterness inside of you. And you'll see everything critical. Here's the deal. you got to deal with the heart. I wrote it down this way. It's not in your notes, but it's a good one-liner for you today. Painting the outside of the pump, it doesn't make any difference if there's poison in the well. So you can try your best. You can try, I'm, I'm going to get this right. No, no, no. It doesn't matter how you do it on the outside. Let's deal with our heart issue. Amen. Let's deal with the heart. So what's your prayer for this? And this is the prayer we're going to pray in just a few minutes. Psalm 51, create in me a pure heart, oh God. Yes. We got to deal with our heart. And whenever I start saying stuff and I find myself, even on this, this trip, I took a trip with my family. We, we go on an RV trip every summer and we rented this RV and go around. And I found myself even responding to my kids in a certain way. And I'd ask myself a question. I'm like, where does that come from? 
Where is, where is this issue? Where is, where is this hurt coming from? we got to deal with our heart. Deal with our heart. And I think that we can all deal with that today. Here's the last one, and we'll close with this. Number three, not only your words are powerful, your words reveal who you are. Number three, your words are only controlled with God's help. They're only controlled with God's help. I'm not going to let you leave here today all frustrated with your speech. I'm going to teach you how to deal with a tongue that is messed up. And here's what you do. You give control of it over to God. You release control. What did he say? He says all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. No human being can tame the tongue. You can't do it on your own. So if you get in here and you go, I'm going to talk better to my spouse. I'm going to talk better to my employees. You can't do it yourself. You've got to get before holy God. You've got to go to him. Let me give you a, a prayer that I pray often, especially as I'm a leading and I'm, when I'm frustrated. And in the world that I'm in today, I'm really passionate about a lot of things that are happening in our world today. Here's a prayer I pray. This is a good one for a lot of y'all. Ready? Psalm 141. Set a guard over my mouth, O Lord. <laughs> Like, like, put a gate over it. God, that you control. <laughs> Y'all would stop posting so much stuff on social media if you did this. You'd have such a happier relationship. It says, keep watch over the doors of my lips. What a good prayer for us to pray. We gotta make sure we're careful of what's coming out of our mouth. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. I love, I love the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I love what happened in Pentecost. I'm spirit filled through and through. I find it interesting that what happened in Pentecost is when the Holy Spirit came down and filled the believers, the evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit was that they spoke in tongues. And people have asked me, like, why would that be the evidence? And the, that was the evidence because what's the hardest part of the body for a person to control? Their tongue. So what happens is God takes so much control over them that they no longer even control what they say. It's powerful. But here's what I would rather. I love that. And I think it's important. I think it's amazing. But I saw this quote, and I think it's even more important than you um, speaking in tongues today. Here's, here's the most important thing. It's the proof of God's spirit in your life is not that you speak in an unknown, unknown tongue, but it's that you control the tongue you do know. <laughs> and a lot of people, they'll, they'll speak in tongues a lot, and I'm like, ooh, but do you, I, what would what, what you actually say is gossip, it's slander, it's hurtful, it's not thought through. Control the tongue you do. How do we do that? We do it with God's help. Let me show you how. In the last minute I have with you. There's a guy by the name of Isaiah. He was a prophet. He had an encounter with the Lord on the year that King Uzziah died. The Bible says that he saw the Lord seated on the throne. And he's in the throne room of God. And he sees these seraphim, these angels around the throne singing, holy, holy, holy. He sees heaven. He has this moment and encounter with God. What happens when we see God's holiness, we realize our impurity because we're so lacking compared to our God. And here was Isaiah's response. He says, woe to me, I cried, for I am ruined. I am a man of unclean lips. And by the way, I'm living amongst a people of unclean lips. Let's put this really practical. You come in the presence of God like you did here at Radiant Church today in that worship moment. In the presence of God, your first response should be, what is that thing in my life that's unclean? And for almost all of us today, we can be honest. Before the presence of God, I pray that prayer, Lord, I'm a man of unclean lips. And man, am I a part of a church of people of unclean lips. We all got issues with this. So what's the solution to that? As he cried out to the Lord, God Almighty, then one of the seraphim, the angels, flew with a live coal in his hand from which he had taken from the tongs and the altar. And with it, he touched my mouth. And he said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. What's the solution? From the throne room of God, we need God to come in and purify us and change us and say, God, we, we can't do on our own. You can do, and you're a God that wants to purify our speech. Can we give him a little bit of praise today, church? So let's close our eyes across Tampa Bay today, across all of our locations. Can I ask you a question today? Being honest, being vulnerable, nobody moving around. This is a moment right now with you and God. We're gonna have an Isaiah moment right now. You say, Aaron, I am um, a person that struggles regularly, like, like I am. I'm a person that struggles with controlling my mouth and I need God's help to control it. I need God's help today. If that's you, throw a hand up to heaven right now. Come on, 
All right, that's almost all of us. Yeah, just keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. No, 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 no. we're gonna have a moment right now. And then at all of our campuses, you say, okay, I'm ready to give control. You have a hand raised. I want you to take that other hand, raise it up to heaven as a sign of surrender. Jesus, right now, you see the hands raised in surrender. Take the coal from your altar. Take, Lord, let us understand your holiness and your righteousness. Purify our speech. Let us be a people that speak life and not death. Let us be people that speak encouragement and not criticism. Let us be a people that speak so much, God, building up of each other instead of tearing down each other. Lord, forgive me. Come on, ask him right now. Forgive me for how I spoke to my spouse, about my boss, about my friends. Let me be the person that when I walk into the room, life comes into the room because of what I speak. And we thank you for it and we give you the praise for it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Are you with me? Can you hear a good amen today, church? With one more group of people, can you just close your eyes? It's a group that doesn't have a relationship with God. I want you to know, you can't do this thing on your own. You can't control this thing on your own. You have to make a decision today to say, Jesus, I surrender control over to you. And if you're in this place and you don't have that relationship with God, you can start it right now. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. But that's why Jesus came. He came as the perfect sacrifice. So what's our response? Our response is that we surrender our life to him. We have a moment where we say, today's the day I give Jesus my life. And today's your day. So you'll never control your tongue until you give him your heart. Some of you, you need to give him your heart today. Control of all that you are. If that's you on the count of three, why don't you throw that hand up? We're not gonna embarrass you. We're not gonna have you stand, come forward. But right there in that seat between you and God, this is your moment to surrender your life to Christ. It's your salvation day, your day you're born again. It's a big day. If that's you on the count of three, throw that hand up. One, it's my day of salvation. Two, I'm giving Jesus my heart. Three, throw the hand up all over this room. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, so many people. Why don't we all pray this prayer out loud together at all of our campuses. Why don't we pray this prayer? Say, dear Jesus, today I give you my life. I give you my heart. I give you my sin. Thank you for dying for me. Forgive my past, my present, and my future for the rest of my life. I'm gonna follow you. Be my Lord and be my Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody that believes it says, come on, let's celebrate those who just made the best decision ever.